Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Board. And coming up here on today's show, the latest Raiders draft news that you need to know. We're going to talk about Jalen Carter, Jack Campbell, Dayon Henley, and another player. I'll reveal him here in a little bit that the Raiders have an official top 30 visit with. If you're not already subscribed to the show, take a second, hit that big old red button that says subscribe, turn on those notifications. We are a free YouTube channel and every subscriber helps us. We're 50 away from 136K. We're doing the one chip challenge tomorrow, so tune in for that. And then happy hour is going to be on Friday as well if you want to hang out with the nation and have a good time. Let's talk about Carter here, the defensive tackle from Georgia. He is visiting with the Silver and Black today. And if you've watched this show for a long time, you'll know that I believe he is the top defensive tackle in the draft. And from a talent standpoint alone, he was the number one player on my big board. Why? Because the tape just shows if you need a dominant defensive tackle, and I still believe that the NFL is one in the trenches. You can have all these sexy skill position players. You can have a great secondary. But if you're not winning up front, it's going to be a long, long Sunday afternoon for you. And if you have Carter, well, then it's going to be a long Sunday afternoon for the offensive line. The reason why Carter is such an interesting name around the Raiders is because Raiders beat reporters, you got to take everything that they say with a grain of salt, unfortunately. And we're going to go back to an old report. I tweeted out that Vic Tafer said that the Raiders will not be drafting Georgia defensive tackle Jalen Carter because in an article and a report that he put out, quotes, Carter is not an option for the Raiders at number seven, having already been crossed off by the team. So then... Some stuff started to circulate. Tafer was like, well, wait a minute. I wrote that Carter wasn't an option for them at number seven. Then he said team will likely have someone write a rebuttal soon. And just like Tafer predicted, six minutes later, Vincent Bonsignor just spoke to Josh McDaniels and he reiterated what he told reporters about Jalen Carter on Monday. Essentially, Tafer made something up. He went with his gut reaction. And I don't mind it because to me, I don't, I, I like when people give their honest opinion. Too, too often in today's NFL media, hell, NFL players, they beat around the bush. Tafer gave his honest opinion. Of course, Bonsignor had to try to big boy him or whatever the hell you want to call it. But today, Jalen Carter is around the Raiders. So a lot of people who maybe don't follow the NFL offseason or don't follow what's happening exactly with Carter are like, well, wait a minute. Raiders' biggest need is defensive tackle. You said he's an incredible player. Why is it even a question of whether or not the Raiders would take him? So, he was charged with reckless driving and racing following a death of a teammate and staffer this offseason. He accused of being involved in a drag race at the time of the fatal crash. Also, he didn't finish his Georgia Pro Day. People could say what they want about the NFL Combine. Pro Days are literally designed for you to do well. And Carter looked like somebody who's... To be honest, should be on a JV football team in high school. The other thing that I love about Carter and the reason why it's hard to be like the Raiders shouldn't take this guy is because my NFL comp for Carter has been Jeffrey Simmons all along. And Jeffrey Simmons' comp was a Dominican Sue. If Jalen Carter can be Jeffrey Simmons or a Dominican Sue and you pass on him at number seven, you're going to make a lot of people upset. The biggest problem also is with Mr. Jalen Carter is to me, you had one job, and don't get me wrong, I love to have a good time, and people always hit me with, all right, Mitch, could you give up drinking for a month? Yeah. You know how I could give up drinking for a month? If you told me I could make generational, life-changing money, not for only me, but for my entire family, tell me what it is, because I'm giving that shit up. Jalen Carter had one job, technically two, stay out of trouble. And get into the best shape of your life. You do those two things, you're locked and low to the top five pick. He doesn't stay out of trouble. He gets fat. He put on 10 bad pounds of weight. And he was so out of shape that he couldn't finish his pro day. If you're an NFL GM, if you're a head coach, and you see that, that should scare the hell out of you. I know the Raiders don't want to get burned again by Jamarcus Russell. I don't think he's going to be watching blank tapes. But does anybody think, what if he turns into Eddie Lacy? Or, you know, feast mode. All right, so here's my question to all of you. And this is going to be the pinned comment on today's show. So you're about to get hit with a YouTube ad break. I want you to scroll on down and answer this one honestly. How confident are you that Jalen Carter is going to be a pro bowler? Scale it from 0 to 10. My answer coming up right now. My answer is this. If you look at Jalen Carter and you think that it is an 8, 9, or a 10 above on the confidence scale of him being a pro bowler, you take him at 7. 
If you don't have the confidence, you don't do it. Because his off the field should scare the hell out of you. But if you're like, yeah, you know what, man? Not going to worry about it. He's that much of a dog. Then you go get him. If you're not, then I'm sorry. Raiders can simply not afford to miss on another first round pick. All right, Nation, we got a brand new sponsor here, and I'm super excited to tell you about him. I've been hinting at these guys for a long time, so huge shout out to our brand new Raiders Report sponsor, Zbiotics. Let's face it, after y'all hit me with a bunch of super chats, I don't bounce back well the next day. That is, until I found Zbiotics. Zbiotics pre alcohol probiotic is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. Here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. It's this byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Zbiotics produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. It's designed to work like your liver, but in your gut. Where you need it the most. Drink Zbiotics before drinking alcohol. Drink responsibly and get a good night's sleep to feel your best tomorrow. So what I wanted to do is show you how like awesome this product is, but also how compact it is. If you plan on taking a trip to, I don't know, maybe your buddy's bachelor party, somebody's bachelorette party, throw this in your suitcase. You don't have to refrigerate it. Shake well. And I think that the taste reminds me of, honestly, like you ever have like a bottle of water and different bottles of water taste different? That's what it is. With some of the shows that we do, I'm telling you right now, this is definitely an essential. Let me keep telling you all, though, about our awesome sponsor here. Give Zbiotics a try for yourself. Go to zbiotics.com slash chat sports to get 15% off your first order when you use code chat sports at checkout. Zbiotics is backed with a 100% money back guarantee. So if you're unsatisfied for any reason, they'll refund you your money, no questions asked. So, Nation. What the heck are you waiting for? If you like the party here on the show, at least take care of yourself. It's something that I've definitely been trying to do more often. Go to the link that you see below, zbotics.com slash chat sports. I'm going to put that link for you guys in the comments and in the description of today's show. Huge shout out to our brand new sponsor, Zbotics, for sponsoring the Raiders Report. Let's go to this next guy here, and it's linebacker from Iowa, Jack Campbell. He's got a top 30 visit scheduled with the silver and black. And when I look at all the linebackers in this year's class, he's the second best one in my personal opinion. When you talk about Carter, he's an option for the Raiders at 7. Campbell is an option for the Raiders at 38. Personally, I don't think there's any way in hell he falls all the way down to 70. So if you want him, you got to take him in round two. He's 6'5", he's 245 pounds, 125 tackles, a sack, a forced fumble last season for the Hawkeyes. If you're wondering, all right, Mitch, well, what kind of scouting report you got on him? Well, he won the Buckus Award, which is best linebacker in college football, and I don't think they give that out to just any schmuck, so he's got to be pretty good at it. Plays with a solid speed, he's got solid awareness, and he can play both against the pass and the run. I'm going to throw out this word that I always say on the show, versatility. If you don't got versatility, you're not going to fit in Patrick Graham's system. He isn't a hard tackler. Like, I think Raider fans, they go back and they look at Denzel Perriman. He's a thumper. To me, that's not what Jack Campbell is, but he's got incredible intangibles, his instincts, and those things are going to make him a solid middle, middle linebacker in the NFL. The one person that I used to always love, Luke Keekley. And when he first came out, I don't think a lot of people thought that he was going to be as good, but he was just always around the football. And sometimes, if you're just really good at football and you just have those instincts where you're always in the game, that's what Campbell can offer, which is why he's my number two rated linebacker. Let's go to another linebacker here, though, that the Raiders are visiting with, and it's Henley from Washington State. He, to me, is the fourth best linebacker in the 2023 NFL Draft, and I wouldn't like him at 38. To me, he's more of a third-round option, so if you could get him at number 70, I'm okay with it. In terms of my big board, he's ranked number 59, I believe, off the top of my head. So it would still be a little bit of a reach, but the Raiders need linebacking depth. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Is he undersized? Yes. But people were ripping on me a little bit because I was like, I don't really know if I want Devin White. Devin White can't cover. Henley at least has that sideline-to-sideline -side ability, and he showed you that last season with the Cougars with over 106 tackles. If you're going to have him in a system... 
I believe he's best fit in a 4-2-5 base scheme. He's going to play Will Linebacker. Guess what? Patrick Graham likes to run. They like to run a 4-2-5 a lot. They like to run out the nickel packages, throw out five defensive backs. Henley works well in those areas. He has that legit sideline-to-sideline -side range tackling skills. Don't know how well he will stack up against some NFL tight ends, but then again, not many linebackers do stack up well with them. He's only played linebacker for two seasons, and his inexperience does show at times on tape. But I know for a fact that the Raiders love this young man here, and they love the fact that they believe that they can continue to work with him. If you look at a product and you say, okay, he's gotten better and better and better. If you're a coach, that's a dream because you're like, all right, he's played two years, and he's gotten better and better. If you think then you can make that next step and then take that next step even further on that, to me, if you're the Raiders, you're crazy not to look at it. Worst case scenario for Henley, I believe he's going to be an incredible gunner in the NFL. So in terms of value, because a lot of times when you look at the draft, hell, anything in life, it comes down to value. If I offered you Jack Campbell at number 38 or you get Dayon Henley at number 70 in round three, what's the better value? Type JC for Jack Campbell, Henley, type DH at 70. Even though I got Campbell ranked higher, I'll tell you this, if I can get Henley at 70, that to me is a better value than Campbell at number 38. Another top 30 visit, which this one makes me ecstatic, Deonta Banks. This has been a dude that I'm going to go back two months ago, and I said, watch out for Banks starting to climb up boards. I, I, if he was available at 38, I don't know if I could do a backflip, but shit, if I had enough drinks, I'd probably try it. Luckily, I got Z-Biotics now. But if he was there at 38... Love him. He's my number four cornerback, 6'2", 205, an absolute athletic freak. 38 tackles last season with Maryland, one interception and eight pass breakups. If you miss on Devin Witherspoon, if you miss on Joey Porter, if you miss on Christian Gonzalez, you better hope that you get Deonta Banks because that's like the clear top four cornerbacks in this year's class. But, hey, that's just my opinion. So in terms of the top 30 visits so far, just mentioned Deonta Banks. Here are the other 10 confirmed. You got Jalen Carter, Kelly Ringo. You guys can read. A lot of cornerbacks here. I love Julius Brents. His arms are so stinking long that I'm pretty sure he could do a handstand and stand on his feet at the exact same time. You got Brian Branch, Jamie Robinson, Tyree Wilson. From the offensive side of the football, a lot of quarterbacks. You got your top quarterbacks in here. They also met with Will Levis. I'll have to talk to Jeremy about not making that. Jalen Duncan is also an offensive lineman that they met with. And Duncan is a really intriguing prospect because you look at how athletic he is and you're like, dude, this guy's incredible. But then you watch the tape and you're like, this guy stinks. So if you're a dude, a coach like Carmen Brasillo, Jalen Duncan is a type of product of player that you might be able to work with if you have two three third round picks. Luckily, the Raiders do. So before I head on out of here today, man, I want you to know, save this date. Meet up with Shugs and I Saturday, April 15th, 7 p.m. Central Time. Huge Raiders event at this address. Yes, I know. The event starts at 4 p.m. It ends at midnight, but Chugs and I, it's more on me. I can't get there until 7. Chugs, I know graphic Raiders there. I've been having people sending me times of them chugging boots. Shout out to Mercedes um, <laughs> John Butson. If you want to challenge Chugs and I to a beer off, if you want to talk a little Raiders, that's the time. I need you to save that for me, please. All right, before I go, when I was filming this video, there was some news that came out here around the Raiders. They are moving on from Julian Dye as their punter, and then they're also moving on from Isaiah Zuber at wide receiver. I believe if my math is correct, there's somewhere around 71 players currently on the roster, and because they moved on from them, it doesn't save you any money in salary cap space. Huge shout-out to all y'all for tuning in. Remember, again, tomorrow, it's chip day. Enjoy your day. Get ready for a hell of a show. Peace out. I love you.